I want to talk to you about this character named Asahel. Now, this is a character most people don't even know about. Probably most people haven't read about it. If you go up to your Christian friend today at work and ask, ask them if they've read the story about Asahel in the Bible, they're going to be like, I don't even know who you're talking about. So it's a really interesting story over in 2 Samuel chapter 2. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 12. And Abner, the son of Ner, and the servants of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, went out from Mahanaim to Gibeon. And Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and the servants of David went out and met together by the pool of Gibeon. And they set down the one on the one side of the pool and the other on the other side of the pool. So you got Ishbosheth's servants on this side and you got David's servants on this side. Now verse 14, And Abner said to Joab, Let the young men now arise and play before us. And Joab said, Let them arise. So Abner's boys are going to go fight against Joab's. Then there arose and went over by number twelve of Benjamin, which pertained to Ishbosheth the son of Saul, and twelve of the servants of David. And they caught every one his fellow by the head, and thrust his sword in his fellow's side, so they fell down together, wherefore the place was called Helkath Hezerim, which is in Gibeon. And there was a very sore battle that day. And Abner was beaten, and the men of Israel, before the servants of David. Now, Here's where you're going to get introduced to Asael. And there were three sons of Zeruiah there, Joab and Abishai, Abishai and Asahel. And Asahel was as light a foot as a wild roe. And Asahel pursued after Abner. And in going, he turned not to the right hand nor to the left from following Abner. Then Abner looked and looked behind him, and said, Art thou Asahel? And he answered, I am. And Abner said to him, Turn thee aside to thy right hand or to thy left, and lay thee hold on one of the young men, and take thee his armor. But Asahel would not turn aside from following of him. And Abner said again to Asahel, Turn thee aside from following me. Wherefore should I smite thee to the ground? How then should I hold up my face to Joab thy brother? Howbeit he refused not, he refused to turn aside. Wherefore Abner, with the hinder end of the spear, smote him under the fifth rib, that the spear came out behind him, and he fell down there, and he died in the same place. And it came to pass that as many as came to the place where Asahel fell down and died, stood still. Joab also and Abishai pursued after Abner, and the sun went down when they were come to the hill of Amma, Amma, that lieth before Gaia by the way of the wilderness of Gibeon. So, let's look at this Asahel. An interesting character. What you got here in 2 Samuel 2, 12-17, you got Isbosheth's servants fight David's servants. Now, David's men beat the servants of Isbosheth, and it was a victory for Joab, for Abishai for Asahel until Asahel takes off after Abner. Now, you ever heard of the saying, you need to quit while you're ahead? That's what Asahel should have done. But instead, he rushed in. You heard the common saying, fools rush in? Well, that goes along with this. Asahel was doing a foolish thing. Now, Here's some things that we can pick up from this story of Asahel. You need to start praying while you're ahead. Just go ahead and start praying while you're ahead. If Asahel would have thanked God and meditated in the Word for a moment, Abner would have been on up the road. He'd have been long gone. Asahel would have lived to fight another day. Asahel wouldn't have died that day. You see, sometimes you need to quit while you're ahead. They had just had the victory over Ishbosheth's servants. 
You see, if you never slow down and take your time to reflect on the last victory, you're going to get burnt out. You're going to get tired. You're going to get frustrated. Just continuing to go on to the next thing. And then when you complete that, you go on to the next thing. And then on to the next thing. And on to the next thing. Your determination is good. But you're going to get burnt out. You know, the Lord has these things in your life that you need to do. Like, stop and pray. Another thing to do is stop and study. Study to show thyself approved unto God, it says in 2 Timothy 2.15. Stopping and studying is a slow process. You know, perhaps if Asahel had studied Abner before rushing in, he would have known to dodge the spear. You see, Asahel was fast. It says he was light of foot as a wild roe. But Abner was a veteran, experienced warrior. Imagine if Asahel said, I'm not going to rush in after him. I'm going to wait. I'm going to study the enemy. I'm going to figure out what he does. Maybe he could have dodged the spear when he got up that close. You know, a lot of people, as soon as they get saved, they read the Bible a little bit and they think they're ready to just go on in a full-on attack against any cult leader. But as a, a brand new Bible believer, you can't get in an argument with a Church of Christ pastor when you don't even know enough Bible yourself. He'll end up converting you or the people around you will be converted because it'll look like he knows what he's talking about and you don't. Even though you're on the right side, he knows his wrong doctrine better than you know your bad doctrine. So you are you got a good motive, you got a good heart, and you're trying to shut up this false gospel preacher and here you go taking off after him and he just stabs you with the hinder end of the spear you see if you don't stop and study you'll be ignorant of satan's devices second corinthians 2 11 he will get you with the hinder end of the spear so you need to stop for a moment start praying while you're ahead Study to show thyself approved. These things will slow you down a little bit. You see, Asahel was light of foot as a wild roe. He was really fast. But sometimes you got to stop chasing expectations. You know, there in verse 18, it says, And there were three sons of Zeruiah. I don't know if you know who that is, but Zeruiah is... David's sister. So this means that Asahel, Joab, and Abishai were David's nephews. Asahel is David's nephew. Imagine the expectation placed on you when King David is your uncle. So you can imagine Asahel feels like he's got these huge expectations to live up to. So he's probably thinking... If I can go after Abner, kill him, take his armor, I can make a name for myself. I can live up to Uncle David. I can live up to being the son of Zeruiah, David's sister. And then you look at Asahel's brothers, who are Joab and Abishai. You know, Joab is David's chief commander. 2 Samuel eight sixteen. And Abishai is one of David's mighty men, 2 Samuel 23, 18. Look at, look at what he did. In 2 Samuel 23, 18, it says, And Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was chief among three, and he lifted up his spear against three hundred and slew them and had the name among three. You see that? Imagine that being your brother. Killed a hundred or uh, killed three hundred enemies. And then Joab, David's chief commander. That's your brothers. So imagine the pressure Asahel would feel that he's got to live up to these expectations. And when you chase these expectations, it causes you to seek self glory. 
seeking self-glory, it's a vain thing. It's because at the end of your life, it's just going to vanish away. You're going to get to the judgment seat of Christ, and if everything you did was for self-glory, you missed it. It's all got to be for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, I say hell was as light of foot as a wild row, it says. They run about 37 miles per hour, so he's super fast. And so he takes off after Abner. He's going to feel like he needs to live up to his gift of quickness his or speed. But you need to stop chasing expectations. That'll slow you down some. You're just running into an earthly death. You're going so quickly. And the next thing, next thing is, sometimes fleeing brings the victory. You know, a wild row, it doesn't just, it doesn't just run after you know, and attack. You know, the Lord could have put, you know, he's light of foot as a, a lion or something like that. You know, lions are fast too. But he put light of foot as a wild row. You know, maybe he should have been running the other way. You know, he's not a lion here that's ready to attack. Sometimes fleeing brings the victory. You know, he'd have been better off to run the other direction. He'd have lived to fight another day. And the Bible talks about fleeing many times. Flee youthful lust, 2 Timothy 2.22. Flee fornication, 1 Corinthians 6.18. Flee from idolatry, 1 Corinthians 10.14. You're better off avoiding certain things instead of running right into them. Asahel already got the victory here. They had took down the servants of Ishbosheth, beat them up pretty good, and they were the ones that got called out. But Asahel, trying to make a name for himself, he's running after Abner. You know, there's some people you're better off avoiding instead of getting in the argument with them. You know, you don't have to win every battle. You don't even have to involve yourself in every battle. Some battles aren't yours. And, you know, some battles you don't have to just keep fighting over and over again. Like, some people you're getting in arguments with ten times. And in Titus 3.10 it says, A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. You don't have the responsibility to just keep telling him and telling him and telling him. And getting in a battle with him over and over. You know, a wild row is better at, better at running away from an attack than than attacking. And Asahel's strength became his weakness. It ran him into a premature death quickly. And you need to seek God's glory, not your own. Asahel is in a rush. You know, they say fools rush in. He's in a rush to kill the enemy commander, Abner, to get his own glory. It's obviously for his own glory. And that's the big mistake here. He's trying to make himself a name. You know, it says there in verse 19, And Asahel pursued after Abner. And in going, he turned not to the right hand nor to the left from following Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Art thou Asahel? And he answered, I am. The only two words Asahel said is, I am. And Abner said, Art thou Asahel? He knows his name. Just like the unclean spirits in the book of Acts. In Acts, over in the book of Acts, 19.15, uh, that evil spirit says, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? I believe the unclean spirits know our names. And Abner knows Asahel's name. And I think Asahel was probably flattered that Abner knew his name. You know, he knew, he, looking back, well, nobody else is this fast enough to catch up with me. And 
Asahel is glad because he's trying to make himself a name. And the only two words that he says is, I am. And I think God puts certain words and phrases in the Bible for a reason. And I think that that being in there shows that Asahel was relying on his own strength. Because, because who is the I am? Over in Exodus 3.14, it says, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. So I think the, the Lord allowing that to be put in the Bible shows that Asahel was running in his own strength. That I am is God's title. And you see, not every battle is your battle. Abner is a more experienced warrior than Asahel, and he knows it. And that's why Asahel says, And Abner said to him, Turn thee aside to thy right hand or to thy left, and lay thee hold on one of the young men, and take thee his armor. You know, pick on somebody your own size. You get any closer, I'm going to have to kill you. You can't get my armor. You can get one of these other guys' armor. I don't want to have to turn around and have to kill you. But Asahel would not turn aside from following him. And Abner said again to Asahel, Turn thee aside from following me. Wherefore should I smite thee to the ground? How then should I hold up my face to Joab thy brother? You know, I'm going to smite you to the ground, Asahel, is basically what Abner's saying. You see, Asahel needed to get more well-grounded before taking on someone like Abner. Asahel needed his brothers with him, Joab and Abishai, if he was going to take on Abner at this time in his life. Abner's warning him, I'm going to smite you to the ground. And you know, the Lord could have laid Abner into the hand of Asahel. The Lord does it all the time. He's all the time giving the, the bigger opponent into the hands of the smaller opponent. And he, 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 uh, he could have done that, but Asahel would have got the glory. They'd have been like Asahel. He's light of foot as a wild row. He chased down the great Abner, and then Asahel would have got the glory. Asahel should have waited and let the Lord do this in his own time and his own way. This way God could get the glory and not the speed of Asahel. You know, Paul says when he's given the qualifications of a bishop, he says, Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into the snare of the devil or the condemnation of the devil in 1 Timothy 3, 6. And, you know, that's, there's a temptation there where you get lifted up in pride and you fall into that snare of the devil, that condemnation of the devil. Abner tells him, Wherefore should I smite thee to the ground? Asahel isn't well grounded enough. He hasn't, he hasn't fought like Abner has. He hasn't been humbled enough. So what you're going to have to do, slow down and live to fight another day. The fast momentum of Asahel was used in Abner's favor. Most likely, Abner was nowhere near as fast as Asahel. But he's wiser. He's smarter. He's more experienced. He just turns a bit and gets him with the hinder end of the spear. Speed doesn't always get the job done. Sometimes you go slow. Sometimes you just stop completely. Sometimes you just turn around and give a jab here, like Abner does. Asahel got the wrong end of the stick, they say. He literally brought it on himself. He finally got the point, as they say. And... What started out as a victory turns into a sad day for David's side here. Chasing your own glory can take you down a road where you fall into the snare of the devil, away from the help of the brethren. You see, the 
pursuit of your own glory is a vain thing. You need to be seeking the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, not trying to make yourself a name. You don't want to be like the people at the Tower of Babel. And you see Abner here, he doesn't even he doesn't he doesn't want the fight. He knows if he smites Asahel to the ground, he's gonna have to take on Joab. He's gonna take have to take on Abishai. He might even have to take on King David. You know, Asahel's refusal to give up. His determination is to be admired, but it wasn't his fight. He, it says in verse 23, Howbeit he refused to turn aside. Wherefore Abner with the hinder end of the spear smote him under the fifth rib. Now that's significant. The fifth rib, five in the Bible associated with death. Genesis 5, the first time somebody dies. Or the fir first time it mentions somebody dying. And now that's what the whole chapter is about. This person lived to be this many years old and he died. You know, you think about Satan, he's got the power of death. It's got five Satan's got five letters in it. Death's got five letters in it. People die in the Bible getting smote under the fifth rib. And the spear came out behind him, and he fell down there and died in the same place, and it came to pass that as many as came to the place where Asahel fell down and died stood still. So Joab and Abishai they see their brother laying there, this mighty warrior who died prematurely, way too early. And automatically they want vengeance, obviously. So Joab also and Abishai pursued after Abner. And the sun went down when they were come to the hill of Amma that lieth before Gaia by the way of the wilderness of Gibeon. But notice something. You get down to verse 30. It says, And Joab returned from following Abner. And when he had gathered all the people together, there lacked of David's servants 19 men and Asahel. So the thing, the difference between Joab and Asahel, most likely Joab's nowhere near as fast as Asahel. But Joab knew when to quit. And he returned from following Abner. And you know what? He lived to fight another day. And then in chapter 3, he gets his vengeance and murders Abner in the next chapter. And I'm not saying that was necessarily a good thing either. But he lived to fight another day, unlike Asahel. So Asahel, a brave warrior, it seemed like he was doing everything right, but he was trying to fight a battle that wasn't his. Notice in verse 19, it says, He turned not to the right hand nor to the left. He was on the narrow way, doing everything right. But he was getting into a battle that wasn't his. He was trying to get ahead of God. He was seeking out his own glory. Maybe you are someone that's doing everything right. You're living right. And you're going down the good and narrow way. But is everything that you're doing, are you doing it all for your glory and not for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ? That's the question.